thing that always irritates me is how long it takes my frozen dinners to cool down after I've microwaved them before I can eat them. So I started thinking about some ways that I might be able to solve that problem. So first, I did a test on a common meal that I often eat. I nuked it the usual amount of time. It's not a frozen dinner anymore, now it's piping hot. In fact, it's 171 degrees hot. So to be scientific about this, I went ahead and recorded that data and measured again every 30 seconds using my iPhone as a stopwatch. Now at about the 5 minute mark, you can see the top surface has cooled off to 123 degrees, but the bottom is still 154. So here's the chart showing the temperature after 7 minutes. Now you'll notice the fastest drop off in temperature was in the first 30 seconds. And then the drop becomes gradual. Now there's two reasons for this. The first reason has to do with the ambient air temperature. The closer it gets to ambient temperature, the more that the heat transfer will slow down. But the other factor is likely the countertop itself. So when you sit the hot meal down on the countertop, the heat immediately begins to conduct away from the meal and heat up the counter. Now this has an immediate cooling effect on the meal, but the heat will build up in one spot quickly and then sort of just hang around there because there's nothing to remove the heat. That's when I got the idea to use these old Pentium 2 heat sinks. It was obvious I'd need to grind off these little pieces. In fact, there's a very slight offset between the center and the rest. So I went back over to the Geek Pub and I used the belt sander to quickly solve this problem. But then I had to figure out a way to put all of this together. So I used my trusty iBook clamshell and SketchUp to come up with an idea for an easy to build frame out of wood. And this is what I came up with. The goal was just to make it as easy to build as possible out of wood, just for a proof of concept. So I got right to work constructing this thing. Once I was done with the wood, I decided to use this truck bed liner to coat the thing, which will make it have a plastic type feel to it, and it will make it resistant against the steam from cooling down frozen dinners. After it dried, I did the final assembly. And here's the finished product. You can see the big fan on the top and the three smaller fans on the bottom. So I performed the same cooling test again using my cooler. So interestingly enough, this one actually started off 8 degrees hotter than the first one. Still, it cooled down very rapidly. You can see the heat sinks are staying around 88 degrees, so the fans are doing well at dissipating the heat. It's down to 122 degrees after just a minute and a half. In fact, I didn't even bother to cool it down beyond three and a half minutes because it was starting to get cold and I wanted to eat it. Well, so there you have it. It's not the most elegant looking device ever, but uh, you know, I just wanted to build something as cheaply and quickly as possible just to test the theory to see if it works. And apparently it does, it, and it only cost me about $25 to build it. Now, if I wanted to get real serious about this and make it look like a true kitchen appliance, I'm sure I could spend some time with my 3D printer and come up with something a little bit more elegant. And um, you know, I've already thought of a ton of features that I'd like to add to it. For example, um, it'd be great if it had like some uh, rocker switches up here where I could turn like the top fan on and off or the bottom uh, heat sinks on and off uh, individually so they didn't necessarily always have to run together. Um, if I wanted to get really cool, I could put like a microcontroller and some kind of temperature sensor on the heat sinks to say that, okay, you know, shut the fan off when the temperature gets down to a certain um, degree. But it'd also be kind of cool if the top part could open like a clamshell uh, so that you could put larger items on there, or especially if you didn't want to use the top fan. Um, you know, and the other thing I thought about doing was using thermoelectric coolers um, on the top of the, um, the heat sinks, but uh, those are pretty pricey and it would probably cost me like $100 to coat the top of those with thermoelectric coolers, so I decided not to do that. And I'd like to point out there are other things that you could cool down uh, beyond microwave dinners with this thing. Uh, for example, uh, baked cookies or even certain types of crafts that uh, you, you know, might need to uh, cool down after they've been hot, or uh, even hot circuit boards, or you know, there's any number of things that you might use it for. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you again real soon.